Consider the functions f and g with the graphs shown below. If capital G of x is equal to g of f of x whole thing squared, what is the value of g prime, capital G prime of 5? And I encourage you to now pause this video and try to solve it on your own. So let's try to think through this, this somewhat complicated looking function definition right over here. So we have, we have capital G of x. And actually, let me do it. Let me write it this way. Let me write it this way, I'll do it in yellow. We have capital G of x is equal to this quantity squared. And what we're squaring is G of f of, G of f of x. G of f of x is what we're squaring. Or another way to write G of x, if h of x, if h of x were to be equal to x squared, we could write G of x, G of x, is equal to h of h of this business, h of g of f of x. Let me just copy and paste that so I don't have to keep switching colors. So, so copy and paste. There we go. So this is another way of writing g of x, where whatever we g of f of x, we input that into h of x, which is really just squaring it, really just squaring it. So there's a couple of ways that we can write out the derivative of capital G with respect to x. And you can imagine this is going to involve the chain rule. But I like to write it out just to clarify in my head what's going on and to make sure that it actually makes some sense. So one thing that we could write, we could write that the, cap the derivative of G with respect, let me, I'll kind of mix notations a little bit. But I'll write the derivative of G of x with respect to x with respect to x is equal to is equal to the derivative of this whole thing this whole thing so let me copy and paste it copy and paste it's equal to this derivative of this whole thing with respect to with respect to what's inside of that whole thing so with if you wanted to treat g of f of x as a variable so with respect to that so copy and paste. So it's going to be the derivative of this whole thing with respect to g of f of x times times the derivative of g of f of x times the derivative of g of f of x with respect to f of x with respect to, I'll just copy and paste this part. Whoops. With respect to f of x. And I like to write this out just to, it, feels good. It looks like it's not, these aren't, these are kind of rational expressions with differentials. It's really a notation more than to be taken literally. But it feels good why, or it's, at least in my mind, it's a little bit more intuitive why all of this works out. So with respect to f of x times, times the derivative of, and I'm using non-standard notation here, but it helps me really conceptualize this, times the derivative of f of x with, re, with respect, with respect to with respect to x. Or another way we could write this is g prime, g prime of x is equal to h prime of g of f of x, h prime of, actually let me do it here, h prime of this, h prime of this, so copy and paste, h prime of that times, times g prime times g prime of f of x times g prime of this. So copy and then paste. So times g prime of that. Put some parentheses there. Times f prime times f prime of x times f prime of x. And when you write it, I like writing it this way because you notice if these were, and once again, this is more notation, but it gives a sense of what's going on. If you did view these as fractions, that would cancel with that, that would cancel with that. And you're taking the derivative of everything with respect to x, which is exactly what you wanted to do. And let me put some parentheses here so it makes it a little bit clearer what's going on. But this thing in my brain, I like to translate that. Well, that's just h prime of g of f of x. This is g prime of f of x. This is f prime of x. And going from this to try to answer your question, the question that they're, they're asking of us actually isn't too bad. 
So we want to know what's g prime of 5. So everywhere we see an x, everywhere we see an x, let's change it to a 5. So we're going to say we need to figure out what g prime of 5 is. g prime of 5 is equal to, and actually let me just copy and paste this whole thing. So copy and paste. And so and let me, everywhere where I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a 5. So let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that. And let me get rid of that. And so I have a 5, a 5, and a 5. So what is f of 5? f of 5 is equal to negative 1. So this right over here simplifies to negative 1. This right over here simplifies to negative 1. And what's f prime of negative 5? Well, that's the slope of the tangent line at this point right over here. And we see that the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line here, is 0. So this right over here is going to be equal to 0. Now that's really interesting. So we could keep trying to, try to well, what's g of negative 1? What's g prime of negative 1? You could see g of negative 1. g of negative 1 we see is negative 1. g prime of negative 1 is the slope here, which is also negative 1. Then we could calculate h prime of these values, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't even have to do that. Because this is the product of three things, and one of these things right over here is a zero. So zero times anything times anything is going to be equal, is going to be equal to zero. Another way of thinking about it is f of x isn't changing when x is equal to five. If f of x isn't changing when x is equal to five, then the input into the g isn't going to be changing. So g, that the g function isn't going to be in the composition. g of f of x isn't going to be changing. And so h of g of f of x isn't going to be changing. So g of x isn't going to be changing. And so the derivative of capital G of x at x equals five is going to be equal to zero.